Joining us now, someone who sadly has some experience uh, with the issue, the professional footballer, Lee Nicol. Lee, lovely to see you this morning. And I wish we were talking about another topic, but could, because you know when I'm going to start, I wonder if you could just remind us exactly what happened to you back in 2019. Some personal videos of yours made their way online. Yeah, thank you for having me. Back in 2019, I became the victim of revenge porn. A little bit different to the blackmailing scams that is going on at the minute, but it's totally relatable to the emotions behind it. So the humiliation, the victim blaming, the guilt, the shame. Um, so I can relate to that part of it. And it is, it's, it, it's increasing severely and really, really quickly. But back in 2019, when I did go through what I went through, this was a crime that I knew absolutely nothing about. Um, you blame yourself. So as the individuals that we blame us and, and those people that are getting caught out sending images online, everyone will blame themselves. But I think there's, there's only one group of people to blame here, and that is the criminals behind it. Mm. I mean, you, you yourself suffered physically, physically and mentally, as I understand it. I mean, how, how was that period for you? Young woman, you know, working in professional football, you know, you should give the world, like, world and a football at your feet and then something like this happens. Yeah, the, the impact was huge. It was life-changing for me. It, it took me away from, from the game for a year. I wasn't strong enough to continue to fight for those three points, to fight for a position in the team, to put up with potential comments on the pitch. And it was the, it was the last thing I was worried about. And me at six years old, my, my first love in life was football. And to have that taken away from me because an off-pitch matter was, was something that I've not quite got over myself yet, but the damage mentally was absolutely huge and some people don't recover from it. And I guess that's that's why I now do what I do and I speak up because some people don't ever recover and some people never find that strength to be able to walk out the door feeling guilt-free or shame-free or stop blaming themselves. And, and it's good that you're out there and talking about your experiences, Lee. I, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong here, I think I remember an interview you gave with Sky Sports at around about the time that this had come out, that this had come out, or oh, in fact, after this had all come out. And you talked about the fact that in the dressing room at Crystal Palace, above, you know, the place where you keep your kit, there was a picture, and sometimes people put pictures of their families there. You had a picture of a tree, a tree in your garden, the tree where you'd once planned to end your life. Yeah, every morning um, through that period of my life, I would wake up and I'd see a, a tree standing alone and it was the first thing that I seen every morning, last thing I seen every night and I believed that that tree was a sign that that was where I had to take my, my own life and I'd planned it in my head and I was battling those thoughts continuously but as weeks went on I had to turn my perspective into looking at that tree differently and that was really difficult and I, I woke up one morning and I just thought look at that tree, it survived all the rain all, all night and now it's sunny and it's still standing and sometimes it loses branches, it loses leaves, but it's still standing and it grows again. Um, and that, that for me, that change of perspective. Now, that wasn't just a light bulb moment. That wasn't like a, I looked at it and it changed my life. But me changing my mentality towards the tree and towards everything else going on in my life, that was really what, what saved my life. Because I just kept looking at that tree thinking, this is it and this is where it's going to happen. I mean, Lee, as you say, there are there are differences um, between you know the 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 revenge porn uh, and indeed the the sextortion that's going on at the moment it seems to be an awful lot more of kind of organised criminal involvement in the latter. But but an, but another difference we we tend to perceive those who are suffering from from revenge porn as being women. The statistics on this showing that in terms of uh, sextortion, actually. 80, you know, a, a significant majority of those who are complaining of it, who have been a victim of it, are, are men. I mean, this is something that can happen to all of us. Yeah, it can, it can happen to young boys, young girls, men and women. Um, but what we are seeing at the minute is a criminal operation of, that is operating outside the UK at the minute that is seen to be targeting men at the minute. And it's, it's our jobs and, and my firm and my, my company's job to make sure that we are there to pick up the pieces when it goes wrong and we are there to raise awareness so that people aren't falling for these scams because they're, they're doing a very good job at it. Give us, give us the advice then, of course. I mean, you've, you, you've said Crystal Palace were, were there for you in your corner. Uh, not, not everyone has a, has a football team uh, to, willing, to, willing to back them up when, when, when occasions like this come along. So, so tell us, what would your advice be to someone who finds themselves in a situation similar to yours or indeed uh, one of those sextortion scams? 
I think we all, everyone around the individual and including themselves, you need to try and stay as calm as possible, not to panic. I think the friends and family and, and professionals around them need to not, not judge, place no judgment on them and just be there to offer the emotional support, the arm around them when they need it and just be there for them. And I think that's that's all we can do at the minute. You, you need to go and get professional support when this does happen. You need to make sure you're re uh, reaching out to Revenge Porn Helpline and, and media lawyers that can help get, in that, get this took out um, off the internet. But do not fall for it. Do not send these people any money and those around them. Just keep them calm. It's going to be okay. Don't add to the chaos. Don't, don't add fuel to the fire. Don't tell them things that are being said online or just stay calm because everything else is chaos. Some very good advice there, Lee. And look, we got through an entire interview and I didn't even ask you what you thought about the final in uh, Seville this week as well. Um, Lee Nickel, lovely to see you. And thanks so much for taking the time. Really appreciate it. Bye, guys.